everybody and welcome to Homestead Tessie. In this episode of Tessie's, we are going to discuss about bartering and how you can have canned food and barter in case when things get bad. All right, so I am going to be using my favorite preserving cookbook and that is this one right here, The Blue Ribbon Preserves. This is my favorite canning book and then next to that would probably be Ball, but this one is my favorite. I will share with you the link below. If you buy the books used, they're only a couple dollars, even on Amazon. Now, many times when I showcase a book, within hours it's sold out of the used ones. So if you are interested in one, you better go ahead and order it right away because even on thrift books, they get sold out. I guess people are like me and they love books. All right, everyone, let's get the blackberries and let's get the jam started. All right, so what we're going to do is I am going to double the recipe and in two different kettles. So actually, I'm quadrupling this recipe. So it calls for four cups to use eight. And for that, it calls for seven cups of sugar. Now remember, it is a lot of sugar. That's what makes it jam and jelly. All right, everyone, I'm going to take my stick blender and now we're gonna go ahead and blend up some of the berries. Now, I like whole fruit, so I like fruit in my jams and jellies. If you don't like the fruit, you can always strain it in a jelly bag, which is a lot of extra work if you don't want the seeds, and then you would just have jelly. Jam is with the fruit in it. Jelly is just the syrup and it's just the liquid of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna whip this up a little bit and then we're soon going to be able to put them in the jars. Making jam and jelly is one of the easiest canning methods, canning ways of preserving food. This got to come to a rolling boil and I do want to chop it up just a little more. Now I added the pectin to it before it heated up because I have dry pectin. I will share with you the recipe in the description box below for the single recipe. But like I said, I am quadrupling this. All right, we'll meet you back at the kitchen counter and then we'll jar it all up. In the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and get our lids out because we are not pressure canning. These lids should be soaked in hot water. Now, you can pressure can, you can, you can soak your lids in hot water if you pressure can, but the standard is now that you don't really need to do that. But when you're water bath canning, it is important to pre-moisten your lids. So we're gonna go ahead and put all of our lids in here. We're gonna wash our lids, rinse them out, and then we're gonna put them in the bowl with hot water until we're ready to put them on our jars. If you have some extra lids that you pre-soaked, that's okay, just dry them out, and then you can put them back in your package again and reuse them. Now we rinsed our lids and we have them in our bowl. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put hot water to them. And then we can finally get all this jam and jelly jarred up. I am using mostly pints today because I really don't need to have so many jars of jelly. The smaller ones, those I give as gifts. As you all know, or most of you know, I love eating jelly with a bagel in the morning. So a pint will last me a long time, but with jams and jellies, they very seldom spoil. In other words, you can keep them in your refrigerator for many months because of the high sugar content. It helps preserve them. I am going to be putting these in a water bath. I am not inverting them. I'm not inverting them like some people do. I do can my jams and jellies mostly in a water bath. Every once in a while, I will show you a video of me using paraffin wax for jams and jellies. And that video is right up here. That's an old fashioned way of preserving your jam and jelly only using paraffin wax. All right, so let's talk about bartering and why would we wanna barter anything? Well, back in World War II, there were certain things that were very scarce and hard to find. One of these items was sugar. Sugar was something that was very limited. Not only was it sugar, it was flour and all kinds of dried good products. These things were almost impossible to find and it could happen again. And why would we want to barter with jams and jellies? Let's say the scenario would be like again in World War II. I know it's hard to think about it, but it could be. What would be the number one thing that people would want? Well, the American diet is candy, sweets, and sugar. Let's just say we would have a hard time importing sugar. 
Sugar comes from sugar cane. And I remember as a missionary girl in Haiti, they would have sugar canes and we would chew on the stalk. It was quite interesting and fun. But let's just say sugar was a hard thing to find. Jams and jellies would be your number one bartering item. People talk about, you know, bartering all kinds of items and how they would be hard to find. But you know, sugar and jams and jellies would be something that people would really want because they would want that little bit of sweetness in their diet and also it gives them energy. Let's face it, if things were really bad and we were like in the World War II situation at home, we would all be working a little more than what we're used to. We would be burning up more calories. We would be trying to do things on our own. Most people would be growing some more of their food. So jams and jellies is one of the number one things that you could use to barter when things got bad. I believe that wholeheartedly. And having a whole bunch of jams and jellies on your shelf is amazing because you can use it for so many things. All right, we're gonna take the four jar lids and put them on top. Yes, this water is very hot, but I have hands that are very used to hot water. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them on top. And we're going to can them for about 20 minutes. As your jam and jelly sits, it will get thicker and thicker. All right, my friends, as we come to the end of this video, you have a little bit of a homework assignment. You didn't know you were back in school, did you? I want you to take a few moments after this video is over, and I want you to think, what are some things that you could barter if things were bad? Everybody's got something in their home that they could use to barter. And what would you barter it for? Most of the time in a really bad situation of the world, food would be the number one thing that we would do some bartering for. But can you sew? Do you have a medical field that you used to be in when you were younger? Or do you have silver and gold and all kinds of coins and things like that? What could you use today to barter in an emergency situation when there was something you really needed. So it's something to think about. It's something we don't want to think about, but you know what? Thinking about it ahead of time really takes the anxiety out of it a little bit because you think of all of these different scenarios, but you know what? You just never know what tomorrow will bring and maybe, hopefully, we will never need to barter with anything.